Yes, with that, let me hand you over to Tom, who will talk about boundary markers. Thank you. Good. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Tom Hilvikus. I run... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I run a um, Twitter account called Beating the Bounce, posting pictures of boundary markers. Um, not just necessarily boundary markers, but also it's more dedicated to sort of the local authorities that were in place before the London boroughs um, were created. Um, we all know the, the London boroughs, but before that we had metropolitan boroughs. Before that, until uh, some 1900, um, your local authority would have been a parish usually. And um, yeah, that, that's what this presentation will be about. And you'll be asking yourself, <laughs> what's the deal with boundary markers? Um, so just one minute on that, how, do, how did I get into this? So I grew up um, very close to this scene, the um, Iron Curtain, just a sort of a 10 minute drive. I spent a lot of my youth there, just looking over the um, border. Uh, and sort of looking at the boundary marker there, that's quite an important one because it sort of divided the world in the 80s between capitalism and uh, socialism. Uh, I was lucky enough to get clothes from the West that people from the East weren't allowed. They would you know, get shot or um, imprisoned. Um, so um, that's had an impact on me, I'm pretty sure. When I then came to the UK um, almost 20 years ago, uh, in a charity shop I discovered this book, Discovering Parish Boundaries by Professor Angus Winchester. So um, if you're really into this subject after this talk, I, I really recommend this book. Good. Um, let's crack on. Before we actually look at boundary markers, I think I need to teach you a bit about the um, um, sort of history of local government. And uh, one of my favorite maps of London is actually this one, London before the houses. Um, just fields, uh, rivers, mountains. Um, this was before the uh, Anglo-Saxons, you know, coming over here, talking about boundary markers. Um, and before the Romans, 2,000 years ago, um, hardly any people basically here. Sort of the only really uh, road you would get here is Watling Street. And to this day, it's the boundary of um, four or five London boroughs. So if you look at a map of London boroughs, you see this really weird line and you think, hmm, that's sort of an artificial line that's been drawn in the 60s. Not the case. Uh, this is, uh, was actually built before Roman times, uh, Watling Street. Um, I'll come back to that later. Uh, you see lots of rivers. They've all disappeared, apart from this big one here, the Thames and, and River Lee, obviously. Um, um, when people arrived uh, and the population grew, uh, many of these were used as boundary, and to this day um, sort of are partly responsible for London Borough boundaries as well, though the, the rivers are actually gone. Um, fast forward to mid-Victorian times, and that's where we sort of focus because a lot of the remaining boundary markers are still um, um, sort of are from that era, uh, indicating the, uh, the, the boundaries between those parishes because nowadays you know where you are because you have the street signs that tells you what borough you're in. Um, back then, it was sort of, you know, had to be marked. There were no Google Maps or so, so you, you really needed the boundary markers. Um, and um, um, so parishes were originally obviously based on ecclesiastical parishes, so the church, basically. Um, they had um, different names, usually named after saints. You know, Hackney was St. John. We're here, uh, Bethnal Green. That doesn't really come through on the map, but um, it's, uh, it was St. Matthew. This, uh, Isling was St. Mary, and you'll see that later on the, on the actual boundary markers. St. Pancras, obviously, was St. Pancras. Um, um, this, um, parishes in the city were really small because of the den density of population, whereas the further you went out, you um, get bigger, bigger sized parishes. Um, and, and yeah, as I said, many of them, you'll almost recognize the shape of the London boroughs. Obviously, the boundaries were tidied up a bit, sort of aligned with streets, but. Um, you know, Borough of Hackney was a combination of Stoke Newton, Hackney, and Shoreditch, that is, you, that's that. And the boundaries basically existed since the um, 13th um, century when the parish boundaries were fixed. There was a survey by the Pope. Um, this was all about money. Wanted to know how many parishes are there, how much money can come from that parish. Um, 
And after that, the boundaries wouldn't really change. It's a bit like uh, you and your neighbour, you know, you have a garden and you have a fence and you say, you know, you agree, that's the boundary. And you, wouldn't, you would, would not give anything away. Um, so um, th that's when the boundaries were basically fixed. Um, and then, as I said, it was all about the church back then. That was your local government. But um, over the years, the, when, with the growth of population, the parishes would basically uh, take on more responsibility. Roads, uh, they even had something like a settled status. So you had to be registered in a parish in order to claim poor relief. Um, so it was really important to know what's my local authority, the parish. Um, and then um, over the years, sort of the parishes were combined. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail there. But um, until the um, 19th century, 20th century, basically, when the boroughs were created, parishes um, sometimes grouped into districts where, where you're, yeah, basically, your your small local government unit. Um, and as I said, we're focusing on sort of mid-Victorian boundary markers mainly. Um, this is a map of London before the county of London was created. It was sort of a loose corporation um, called the Metropolitan Board of Works, but essentially all the parishes were all independent and you can still see remnants of that so if you walk in Islington you see a uh, vestry of St Mary Islington so vestry is basically your council back then and they were in charge of electricity they had their own uh, power plant um, and all over sort of Highbury and Islington you see uh, these electricity covers by the vestry of St Mary Islington. Uh, St uh, Giles was another district it's a lamp, uh, lamppost, basically. St. Giles was sort of around here, um, in Blooms, uh, around Bloomsbury. Uh, this is Hackney Board of Works. You see a lot of, uh, well, six, uh, five are only left, because um, only, I think, two, two months ago, one um, was lost doing road works, unfortunately. I wonder who's picked that one up, or which skip it ended in, up in. So Hackney um, and Stoke Newton formed, for example, one district in this um, Metropolitan Board of Works. They later separated because they didn't, didn't like each other. <laughs> um, while we're here, actually, um, you see these funny uh, little uh, gaps here. So it wasn't quite unusual to have enclaves and exclaves. So this is actually Hornsey. Uh, Hornsey went all the way um, into Stoke Newington and even sort of on the Stoke Newington road you find a Hornsey parish boundary marker. This is your first boundary marker by the way. Um, so um, there was this funny town called South Hornsey that even had their own town hall which was sort of in the middle of what you probably would call Stoke Newington nowadays. Okay. Um, parishes then sort of um, in 1889 the County of London was created and that then created because of the exclaves actually funny situation here where you had um, a county boundary this is Newton Green uh, running um, through houses and you know different parishes meeting here so within a minute you could walk through county bound uh, county boundary into St Newton, East Lincoln, back to Hornsey and so on. This uh, boundary marker is still there if you want to see it. SMI, you've already learned that stands for St. Mary Islington. SN Stoke Newington indicates that 28 feet from this plate you've got um, posts sunk in road. They're not there anymore, but um, the boundary marker still is. Uh, fun fact Clarkenwell had an exclave uh, um, at Alexander Palace called Muswell Hill. So that was also part of the county of London, but the surrounding bits were basically the county of Middlesex until 1900. And there are still boundary markers there if you want to trace where the boundary was. And that's what it looked like um, after 1900. Um, the uh, parishes basically, many of the parishes became uh, what's called metropolitan boroughs. So Islington was originally a parish, Hackney was parish, they became basically uh, boroughs, borough status. And some, some smaller parishes have sort of merged into new boroughs like Hope and Finsbury. When you walk around that area, you can still see street signs um, with those metropolitan boroughs. So that's a bit of background. You now know what we're talking about. Um, I'll show you some. First example. Um, this is Farron Street. Um, that's sort of 10 minute walk from Canary Wharf. Um, in E14, 
Um, the boundary here is a really weird shape. It's very unusual to have a very straight line. It was presumably a field boundary before the houses were built. But on that bound, uh, basically on the boundary, someone decided to build a school. Yeah, so this is the boundary between Limehouse, parish of Limehouse, and uh, Poplar also doesn't come through on this presentation. It's a bit, but um, this is Poplar. Both in... Um, um, uh, both basically became part of pa Tower Hamlets in uh, 1965. Uh, so on that school, basically, just showing you here, Ordnance Survey Maps, um, BS, doesn't mean BS, it means uh, boundary stone. Um, so you got four boundary stones uh, on um, going f on, on this school, basically. And there they are. So you could easily, within a few seconds, walk from Limehouse to Poplar to Limehouse to Poplar to Limehouse to Poplar all the way around. Uh, and this is what it looks like. Uh, remember the Saints, this is Saint Anne, was Limehouse, um, and All Saints, Poplar. Next one, Smithfield Market. Um, you probably don't notice it when you walk past, but and you can't really see it that much here on the screen, but um, you've got um, PSSM and PSSL, uh, St. Sepp um, um There's a part in Middlesex and one in London. So it's a bit difficult. I'm not going into that. London sort of was always separate from the surrounding county. Um, but um, the parish basically was going over the, London, uh, the city of London boundary, and at one part, those two bits, the north and the south, divided into two separate parishes. This is the one in Middlesex, so they always had the name of the county after the name. And this is basically where then uh, many hundred years later the, the market was built on. Um, so that's the map of the north. Um, just going back a thousand years, the boundary was defined by the river Fakeswell here. So um, basically you can still trace where the river was just by, by that little marking on, on Smithfield Market because it was originally, the boundary was originally defined as a river. Um, another one here, St Pancras and St George Bloomsbury. Very straight line in the Kurt Marker example. Um, you can see here, you know, you can see the line. Further down where it uh, meets the house, you can also see this boundary marker here. And you can even see a St Pancras boundary post. There's still quite a few around that. Um, so really unusual, again, to have a very straight line. But um, that was also sometimes common in f uh, to define field boundaries. So this is a quite early map, uh, sort of Georgian times, before the houses were built. Uh, you can see that boundary already existed here in sort of what's called Lamb's Conduits Field. And then the houses were built and the boundary still had to be marked because um, you know, it, it was um, when the boundary was sort of running through your house, it was important to know which parish do you pay your ta council tax equivalent. It wasn't called council tax, but um, you had to pay something. Um, so it was still important to mark that boundary. Uh, depth at Rotherhigh, um, this is sort of opposite Kenai Wharf, St. What's this? Uh, yeah, De St. Paul Deptford and St. Mary Rotherhigh. This is quite um, an important one because, um, number one, it's quite tall. It's probably like that. It was part of a bridge. It's actually not the relocation. It was sort of relocated a little bit but um, when they got rid of the bridge. Um, but it's also a county boundary. Um, we also don't have time to talk about sort of historic counties, but um, 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 Kent all... The you know, until the County of London created, Kent basically went all the way up to here, uh, meet Surrey, and that's why it's actually called Surrey Keys. Um, so uh, it's, uh, and you've got Middlesex on the opposite, so you have sort of three counties meeting there, historic ones, but um, yeah, um, as I said, in 1889, the County of London was created. So that was also a county uh, boundary, which was also quite you know, sort of important. Liberty of the Kling, very interesting one. You can see a Kling, 1812. Um, so we talked about parishes. There were some, um, there was some form of local government called Liberty, and as the name suggests, they had quite a few liberties. Um, for example, um, they weren't really part of the uh, judicial system of the surrounding county, so the Kling, south of the river, would have been part of Surrey, but w wasn't really under the jurisdiction of the sort of sheriff, and that meant... Um, 
a lot of things were allowed there, not policed, so a lot of um, sort of criminals uh, settled there. Uh, until the liberties, they were all abolished in, um, so I think, 1890 or so, um, as well, when the uh, County of London was created. So you get a few liberties around the city of London, had historic reasons, and we need another note and I talk for that, really. <laughs> Uh, but here, Ordnance Survey map, Liberty of the Clink. Now, uh, we've been very focused on uh, North London, and we've got six minutes left. So, um, uh, the most famous boundary marker last year on Twitter, um, <laughs> Mitchell Morden, it's quite far south. Um, it's on a bridge, I can't show you the whole bridge, I don't have a photo of that, but that was before the bridge had to be replaced, and a new bridge had to be built. This is after. <laughs> Sad. Um, so there were quite a few people who uh, uh, commented on it, most notably the Mitcham Cricket Green Preservation Society, or Historic <laughs> Society, I think. Um, they're quite friendly. They contacted me as well. I'll show you in a minute what about. Um, so. Um, Rightly, they're saying, you know, this is not acceptable. Look at this. This, 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 is, this is really, you know, not possible. Uh, I mean, and then, you know, other people commented. So, you know, there was an outcry. Um, <laughs> this is a different one, Mitchum Cricket Green again. Uh, they retrieved a, a, um, a lost parish marker in the river that's been there for decades. So, and they asked me, you know, who owns it? What should we do about it? But good on them, good on them. <laughs> uh, have you got time for this one? Islington Hackney. Yeah, you, I'm sure you've been to Dawson Junction. This is just a minute from Dawson Junction in case you want to visit to, uh, on this boundary, which really is, as I said, was defined in the 12th, uh, 13th century. Um, um, they are very much the same built, but this one got integrated into a building and then painted over. This one's still freestanding uh, at the car park, in case you want to look. Uh, here's a map, this is the oldest map I could find of that boundary, when there were just fields. Um, and that's a bit later map, but you know, the boundary basically didn't change. Um, Tripoints, Tripoints are exciting because that's where three parishes meet. Here's a nice example, St Pancras, Hampstead and Marnabon. On Primrose Hill, you've maybe stumbled over that when you're sort of running down the hill one <laughs> nice summer, summer night and then wonder what is this, STPP. Um, we've got time, hopefully, for boundary markers in the city of London. There are a bit more uh, parishes in the city and they're not, they had a bit of different function because in the city of London you have a bit different form of uh, local government. The wards um, they have is a bit more uh, important for local government, but you find a lot of markers there, um, mainly boundary plates. Uh, they also do the tradition of beating the bounds still to indicate where the boundary is. It's a very old English um, um, tradition, not, not just in England actually. But they even go through the middle of the river because that's where their boundary is actually, is in the middle of the river, so they have to go out there with a boat. <laughs> um, nice pictures, uh, I think over 300 pictures of boundary markers on the Worshipful Company of Parish Clerks, if, if you're interested. London Bridge, most obvious one, if you walk over it, you find these two, hardly notice them. Southwark and uh, one of the city parishes. Marks and Spencers. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, here. Uh, the, uh, relocated boundary marker. Um, and that happens quite a lot in the city because the city isn't the same as it was 200 years ago, but um, they were quite, they're quite careful and they sort of preserved the markers and put them up again. And ghost markers, that's what I'm going to finish with. Ghost markers are markers that are not there anymore, but you still think they are there. Or you discover them in little, uh, in pictures. So here's one in Stoke Newington. Um, uh, the river doesn't exist anymore. This is the new river, by the way, that got filled in at that point. Um, this is the boundary between ha uh, Hornsey and Stoke Newington. Look what we discovered here. We even know what number it was. They were all numbered um, um, and uh, recently got hold of a list of all the markers uh, so we could identify this as number 115, not 
that it matters that much, but um, <laughs> you, you know where it was because you have photographic evidence now, because that's what a Hornsey marker looks like. Um, th that's uh, a picture a lot of history nerds have seen that sort of comes around the internet every, every two months or so. It shows sort of a city scene at Bishop's Gate. But uh, if you look closely, there is a boundary marker here. Um, that's quite an important location because it's also the city boundary. This is the city of London here, and this is another liberty, the liberty of Norton Fulgate. Um, this is a very old ordnance survey map here, and you can trace it. So that's what it used to look like with a boundary marker, and um, that's what it looks oh. like today. Not there anymore. And that concludes the talk. I hope you now know everything about boundary markers. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> yes, any questions? Uh, I will just ask you to repeat all the questions for people at home. Um, I'm not from here. What is beating the boundaries? <laughs> <laughs> so the question is what's beating the bounds. That's the old tradition I referred to. So in the olden days when there was no Google Maps um, and there were no street signs, especially in sort of rural parishes, you had to reaffirm the boundary, usually every year, so that people would remember where it was. So imagine you're here and the next village is five miles away and you have to teach your children where the boundary is, right? Uh, where is it? Is it in the middle of the river? Is it that field? So you go around your parish basically with uh, um, your, your people Right? Uh, I think in the older days they actually used kids, sort of, you know, sort of dunked them on the, on the boundary markers, but then usually what was happening, they used sort of sticks. And, and as I said, they're still doing it. Um, there are some parishes in the city that still do it, if you're interested. So, <laughs> so you said that the Hornsey one you could identify it by its shape. So, did every boundary marker, like every council that Yeah, so the, the, the question is, do, does every parish have their own sort of boundary marker shape, uh, you know, identity? And that's true. In the same way today, all the streets under the London boroughs have their own sort of shape. You know, you can easily recognize the city of Westminster, you know, that's an iconic street. So in the city of London, Tower Hamlets is not uh, on a post, sort of, I think it's, it's on, on the houses. Um, so, yeah, and this was the same. Every parish had their own, um, usually style. So Hornsey had these really long posts, um, st um, you know, uh, some had stones. So I, I showed you a short, um, sort of small selection of different ones. They're usually typical, so the parish would then have, um, you know, usually that kind of stones or, or so. I'm not sure if they would mass produce them, and that's the reason for that, but they want to have their own identity. Follow-up question. Yeah, did, did different parishes then locate them in different places? Did, were like Well, it was where the line was, and um, usually in sort of inner London where there were houses, it would usually only be the plates, right? So the sort of curb marker was quite, I would say, rather unusual. In the city, you wouldn't get any stones and posts, really, only occasionally. But they were more common outside, sort of, when there was, you know, less houses and, and stuff. So it, it was driven by, is it all built-up area or not? You mentioned we lost a lot of our rivers that used to be boundaries. Uh, where we do still have them, you know, and they're often in kind of concrete troughs running through the middle of nowhere, like in sort of Quagley in South East London or Beverly Brook in South West. Are they still boundaries or have they been shifted for convenience? Well, <laughs> so the question was, are the new rivers still, uh, sorry, 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 the old rivers, are they still there as, as a boundary or is that your question? Is it... Well, well, a lot of them, you know, have been very much yeah. put into man-made channels. Are they still running where they would have been when they were boundaries? Or no. We uh, the new river... Okay, so sorry. The old rivers, are they still there where they are? No, they've been usually di uh, diverted. Occasionally, they still run at that bit. 
I mean, the most important thing is they've been straightened, right? So and that means they are not really running in line with where, where they were anymore. So they're usually sort of been aligned with the street and then sort of as a sewer run underneath the uh, street. As far as I understand, that's another Nerd Night talk, I think. Uh, um, Lost Rivers. There are some really good books on that, especially Lost Rivers in, in London. But yeah, they're, uh, they're usually still around that area. So there are some examples where you can, where, the, where the now is a barrow boundary and you can, not far from that, it's the river that defined the original parish boundary. So there are, there are examples. Question? When are you doing the presentation about the liberties? <laughs> when are you doing the presentation about the liberties? I think we have an opening in September. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let me work on that. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. Right. Well, well thank you. Thank you very much.